Greetings and welcome to a stop motion tutorial from the Devasi Motion on the subject of beams. Now, honestly, I'm a bit surprised I even have to make this tutorial, seeing as the only reason I picked up on the techniques I use for it come from a tutorial by fellow Gundam stop motion YouTuber Raven. F however, it's pronounced. If you don't know who that is, I'll provide links to his channel and the video tutorial in question. But, since you're here, I'll break it down in what I hope will be an adequate fashion. First, a demonstration featuring... the uh, whatever model or figure I pulled out for this. <laughs> Looks fairly natural, doesn't it? Well, it should, since it's the result of practical effects. Ah, uh, you ask? Simple. Lasers! As in laser pointers, specifically. Here I have a set of three laser pointers in red, green, and blue, all powered by AAA batteries. I got these off Amazon. I don't recall if they're a particular brand. They seem pretty generic and are designed for astrology. Astronomy. I keep mixing those up. Now, fair warning about lasers. They can be very harmful to your eyes, so be damn some careful not to go blinding yourself or other people or creatures with these. And also be wary of using them on reflective or glossy surfaces as well. Just throwing a safety net out there if you happen to cause harm to yourself or others by using lasers like these, don't go blaming me, I warned you! Now before you go thinking that's all there is, there is at least one more crucial element in play here. If you collect Gundam models and figures like I do, there's a pretty fair chance you have some beam sabers in your possession as well, and these are what provide the other main element of beam shots like this. Simply point the laser down the length of the saber blade and voila! It's lit up beam for shooting or even swinging at other mobile suits. But with this knowledge in mind, how does one apply it to making Stomp Ocean? Stomp? Stomp? Ocean? What? Why don't I check my spelling? STOP MOTION! Well, the process is simple in concept, if a bit tricky and tedious to pull off, but if you are doing stop motion filming, the tedium should be a factor already accounted for. When filming, one of the first things to start with when preparing something to shoot is to give the illusion of the beam or laser weapon just as it's on the verge of firing by pointing the laser at the tip of the gun barrel. Depending on your frame rate, this could last for one to perhaps three frames. The instant the beam is fired, you want to create a flare effect of some sort. There are a couple ways to do this. If you have adequate effect parts to use in your stop motion, that's one way. Not one I used in this particular instance, though. For my purposes, I simply generated a white frame, sometimes combined with pointing the laser at a certain point on the camera itself. Which again, I warn anyone using this technique to be careful. Also be aware this may damage your camera. I say may damage the camera because, well, mine is still working and the last one broke because I pulled on the wire too much, so take this with a grain of salt. After the flare, of course, you want to show the beam escaping from the barrel of the weapon by aligning the laser and beam saber together so that you can just see enough of the saber on the screen to look like a glowing particle beam. This is the tricky part, and you may have to do some trial and error work on your own part to get things lined up just right. And one thing I can recommend to help those with unsteady hands is to have the beam saber held up by a display stand. Now that you have the beam on screen and in the right position, you should follow up on this with a few more frames of it lingering on screen and slowly getting smaller as the shot dissipates by edging the saber back a little bit at a time with each passing frame. Now depending on your choice of frame rate and the desired intensity of the shot will depend on how many frames you will hold this for, but eventually you should reach a point where the beam pulls completely out of frame to complete this shot. Now I should note that quite obviously a lot of what you do with this trick comes down to being able to frame it well. If the model or figure firing the beam is too far away or something else is in the way, then this practical effect may not be that... well, practical. Also, the color of the lasers and the color of the beam saber may hinder your choice of shot colors. Using a green laser with a pink saber doesn't provide the most 
desirable effect and vice versa. Ideally, some perfectly clear saber blades would accommodate any color, and if you happen to have the real great tall geese, well, you're already in luck. Another issue you may bump into is figuring out which end of the saber to use for a given shot. But my general recommendation is to have the thicker end showing when the beam is coming out, then turn it around as the beam is dissipating. Or have a beam that is thicker all the way through, such as this set of saber blades that came with the Kotobukiya LED sabers. These are actually the most handy saber blades I've come across, since they have the LED that lets them light up without needing to meticulously point a laser at it at all times though the light up action may not be the brightest. Some of the beams have a foggy coat to them as well. These are generally the best for getting the most light out of your shots. Alternatively, you could take your existing beam sabers and give them a light surface sanding to achieve similar results. And that's pretty much all I have to say on the matter. I don't really feel like there's much of a point in being more meticulous on this subject because at the end of the day, there is no exact way to do this. A lot of testing and experimenting will be required on your part to make the most of this technique. I've given you my take on how it's done. If you choose to follow in my footsteps and attempt something like this yourself, that is entirely up to you. Or perhaps you may choose the path of digital effects. That is, again, up to you. This has been a Devasia Motion tutorial. I guess. Um, RCFS and out.